All right, it's been a while since I did videos. Sorry, we've been real busy. We've been traveling a lot. But I'm going to go over our new Mega Bolt ESC. I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to go over the features of this, why we designed it, the, the choices we made, and the things we did on it. And then secondly, I'm going to tell you about the solder mod we did, why we did it, and in the future, how it's going to be done automatically, and even give you a tutorial if you got one and you want to do it yourself. All right, so here we go. This is our new ESC. Uh, it's pretty interesting how it works. Um, I'm pretty excited to have this design because it's a very universal design. It let us you know, branch off three different types of ESCs from it. Actually, we even have a fourth eventually coming with some really high powered FETs. More expensive, it's gonna be more expensive, um, it's, but to be honest, you shouldn't need it. This has been tested 6S high KV without any issues. Um, and it's, it's been very, very, very reliable. So what's nice is you have the center section here and you can see we put this board on here and this just adds extra capacitance. So in the case you're a freestyler or you don't wanna have an external capacitor, um, you can go ahead and get this board, uh, one of these with the board added on. We eventually plan to, to sell the board separately. You can see you can just drag the solder on either side to connect it. Uh, but for now, um, you can get them with it. This is the freestyle version. And you can see these, these are a little crooked because uh, the very first batch, they were more, this particular board was more hand assembled because it was uh, more experimental. So we wanted to make sure that everyone had good adhesion because you can see we, this was uh, ha more hand soldered. This couldn't be done in the SMD factory. This had to be done after the fact to add this on. Um, but you can see we have the capacitors here. They add extra capacitance, which makes it much smoother. Um, you can always add external capacitors and get the basic, and then the race, instead of doing this, we used a heat sink to cool the PCB uh, to have fleet, because you know, when you're racing, you're really pushing the ESC hard. The cooling, we felt, was more important, and you can add the external capacitors um, on that ESC without sacrificing any performance. So one thing we've moved to, we've moved to a single current uh, sensor. The reason we've moved to a single current sensor, we used to have a current sensor on each channel of the board, um, but we found that uh, that is more delayed since it comes through via uh, telemetry. We have some stuff we're gonna be doing with current sensors soon. Um, so we didn't really want that delay uh, in there, so we wanted to be as fast as possible. And this is actually an analog sensor that feeds directly into the flight controller. So it's pretty much as fast as you can get. Um, you can see one thing that is very important, we wanted to push as much power out of this ESC as possible. Now you'll see other people have FETs all over here. Basically they put FETs in the middle and they put them everywhere they can. The problem with that is you have uh, resistance and inductance issues getting the power out to the motor pads. So by putting the FETs as close to the motor pads as possible, and if you notice, our, our afterburner has the motor pads directly over the pads. And in this case, we basically did the same thing. These FETs are directly over the pads. These FETs are t almost touching the pads. Um, so we can deliver the max amps and the max power from this ESC uh, by doing this. So the FET layout is super important. Uh, where you place the FETs, it, it gives you a advantage on um, how much power you're driving and especially if you're racing that matters but if you're freestyling you want your quad to perform the best it can and so we do that so we have a ground plane and a positive plane in this uh esc but i know you guys have had escs burn up and i know um other people have had escs burn up not just our brand every brand of escs have had issues with that by putting these these basically copper um gold covered copper bars for the main pass, for the power to pass through, we've, en we've enhanced the current of the basically positive and negative ground traces and allowed us to pass more power to, uh, through the PCB. So we're unlikely to have issue, any issues with an ESC burning up unless it's some sort of direct short. We're never gonna pull so much power, the PCB basically you know, uh, melts a layer and, and has that issue. So these are super important too, these bars we've added there. It's, it's a very good enhancement for the CSC. It's one of the reasons 
um, it gives us the power. The FETs we chose are these FETs. Um, from time to time, we'll swap out equivalent FETs. But these FETs, we've you know, tested up to 50 amps continuously, full throttle for a whole pack, and we've not had any issues with these FETs overheating or having any problems or anything like that. So these FETs have been pretty good for even high KV6S. I don't necessarily recommend high KV6S because you're gonna exceed 50 amps a channel, but it, it, it should work without any issues and our racers you know, beat the crap out of stuff by doing this. So the advantage of having a bigger ESC like this is it's gonna have more heat dissipation because um, it's a bigger board that the heat can basically radiate through the whole board. The whole board acts as a heat sink and we're gonna be able to push more power because we're using bigger FETs that allow more power uh, than the smaller FETs. So this ESC is more about durability and pushing maximum power. I mean, that's, that's what it's gonna do. Um, and this does a good job of it. One thing you've, you can see here too is we broke out solder pads. So if you break off this connector, and you can see we even glue this connector to try and make sure it never comes off. But if you do happen to ever break this off, you still have these solder pads to fall back on. Or if you just love soldering, you go, go at it. You can, you can solder these pads. Uh, we do some other secret stuff to protect the CPUs. I mean, one of the things um, that we've had in the past is basically voltage is back fed through um, either the grounds removed or it's back fed through the motor channels um, and, and high voltage, not just five volts, like, like some significant voltage goes back there from either the motors causing an issue or I mean, from the ESC causing a spike because an external component or a connector comes dislodged and it'll spike the power. So we've actually added some stuff into here that protects these lines without uh, hurting the signal. Uh, so it'll help protect any of these from failing as well. So we've done, we've learned a lot from the past ESCs. We've watched, you know, what everyone's done. We've watched other companies. We've, we've watched our returns and we've come up with this design that should be as flawless as possible in a four in one ESC, uh, hopefully having no problems. We, like I said, I only know of two reported issues um, actually three reported issues with all of our ESCs. One person I looked and um, basically I clearly saw solder uh, between this pad and these pins here. Um, but you know, it was never flown so we replaced it. Um, and you know, basically if you come to us and you have a problem with our first generation ESCs and you haven't flown it, you can almost guarantee we're gonna replace it unless we see you know, you splattered solder all over it or whatever, but we want to basically get you in the air. Um, we may ask you to return it, but uh, we're gonna get you back in the air as quick as possible. So here's the ESC. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about it, if you uh, want to know anything more about it or why we chose what we chose. Um, but I'm pretty proud of this ESC. I think it's gonna be great, uh, F3 based as well. Um, it lets you do the D-Shot 64 kilohertz, which basically means it's D-Shot that's capable of 64 kilohertz. Um, it's running DSHOT24 as the underlying protocol, but we're naming our DSHOT to what matters, and, that, and that's the frequency of the update. So if you pick DSHOT32, it's going to 12 uh, DSHOT, it's actually uh, DSHOT1200, uh, which is only capable at max of 32 kilohertz. So DSHOT64 should work on this no problem, and technically we could push signals at 64 kilohertz, except the ESC only maxes out at 32 for now. Um, so that gives us some future expandability as well. But there you go. Hopefully I fig uh, went over every question you may have uh, right here as well. There's some cap pads where you can solder a cap on there. We've even used some 330 UF caps and put them directly in there and just tilted them to the side a little. And well, that let us like vertically mount some caps and it didn't even interfere with the flight controller. It went on there at the top just fine. Hey, so now that the ESCs have been in the wild for a little while, we had our first batch go out. We got the feedback from everyone. Um, we had two incidents out of the first batch where people said they were having some issues. We diagnosed it. We were able to reproduce it on one of our quads doing some really crazy stuff. And we came out of fix and then halfway through the first batch, we actually made a repair. Um, I'm gonna show you in this how we did the repair and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of explain, you know, is it needed and, and what exactly uh, we did. So basically, um, the way the circuit works, and I'm gonna explain this the best I can, is there is a positive uh, feed and there's a negative feed uh, going into the CPU. And basically the grounds were too high, there were too many vias on the grounds in comparison to the traces on the positive on one MCU. 
And what could happen, and it was super hard to reproduce, it was just in an extreme maneuver coming off a thing, and it, and it didn't do it in most of the ESCs we tested. We had one or two that did it, and like I said, we had two reported incidents, and both those people that had the incidents fixed it by just direct wiring it, so we don't even think it was related to this. But to be on the safe side, we have modified all the ESCs coming out now, and we modified at least half of the batch that went out to everyone. And if you have one of the very first ones that don't have this modification, you can just contact uh, me and uh, you can send it to me and I'll do it, the modification, or you can watch this video and you can see how to do it yourself. Uh, before I do that though, I'm gonna go over why our ESC, in my opinion, is one of the best designs on the market and why I think you wanna fly this one. With the new modification, it flies amazing. Uh, it flew amazing either way, it's just that makes it extra safe. And we're actually fixing that in the factory. On the next batch, we're gonna use a zero ohm resistor to do that bridge. It's gonna be done in the SM, SMT factory, or whatever, SM uh, at the surface level components. And uh, so it's gonna be kind of transparent. It's just gonna be another component on the board. The following batch will just uh, you know change the PCB, make the trace a little bigger or uh, reduce the ground trace, um, but it'll, it'll have the same effect. Uh, it's not really a major problem, but it's something that you know we didn't feel comfortable. Uh, if we knew we could make it better and we knew we could easily make it better, I literally hand soldered hundreds of ESCs to make sure you guys got them out. We always do a smaller batch in the beginning because we wanna make sure we get any problems uh, ahead of the anyone else getting them. So basically we want some feedback. We're way more sensitive to warranty concerns, so if you call me, or not really call me, but you message us or you sit, do a support ticket, we're gonna be way more lenient on replacing that, if, especially if you describe a problem that we know uh, is an issue. And in general, if, if we see that you know, it hasn't been flown or you just received it, it has a problem, we're gonna to wanna to either replace it or bring it back and, and repair it really quickly uh, and turn it around. So just contact support if you feel like you had one of the very first ones and you want that mod done to it and you don't feel comfortable doing it because it's, it's uh, something you can do, but it's a little more advanced, and I'm gonna show you that. And to be honest, I use a, t a microscope to do it. Uh, you can probably use a magnifying glass as well, but it, it's, it's a little tricky because there's some little components around it uh, to do it. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So I, I, I heated my soldering iron up to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. That's usually where I always keep it. I never change it. Um, I try and just be as quick as possible so I never burn up anything. And what I did do is get some solid core wire uh, I'm not sure where the gauge is, but it's pretty small. Um, and uh, you can buy solid core wire that isn't, doesn't have a coating on it. But in this case, uh, you can see it has a little coating on it and I'm just going to strip it off. So the first thing I'm gonna do is strip off the coating from this wire. Uh, and then um, it's gonna, I'm gonna make a little piece without the coating you can see here. So the, the, the trick I found to make this really easy is I then, then take this piece and hopefully you can kind of see this, but I take this piece and I basically drag solder down the whole thing. So I want to cover it in solder. Because what I'm going to do is use the solder on the wire to actually fix, uh, to, to basically adhere to the components instead of trying to put solder on the components because it kind of tends to make a mess. Uh, this is a much better way i found to do it. Um, so there you go, I cover, cover the wire solder. I don't want to put any extra solder on there, so you know, clean the tip and then drag any extra off you see, and you can clean the tip again. And you just want a decent coating, but no blobs on your wire. So that's the first step. So once we have this wire, we put the ESC up here, and I'm gonna show you this uh, on the microscope. But you can see, so the CPU that has the issues here, um, is this, this CPU here, I believe. Yeah, the CPU right here, you can see it says G-Arm. It's a Giga device CPU. Uh, basically, what we wanna do is we wanna bypass from the regulator here, okay? And we wanna feed it directly to this capacitor which feeds the CPU. Um, so there, you can see there's a little teeny component there. You gotta really be careful not to short that. And you can see there's a capacitor right next to here. Uh, you should be really careful not to short that. Now the easiest way to do this is uh, use lots of flux. I always recommend using lots of flux because it makes the job really, really easy. Um, 
basically everything will just want to uh, attach to where it should go if you're using flux. Uh, and you'll see on this. So let me focus this a little better for you guys. All right. So, heating up my soldering iron, got my tip nice and clean. Uh, I don't want any, there's a little bit of solder on that will come off onto this wire. And once I've done that, I'm going to take my wire, and or actually I'm going to now cover the components in flux. All right, you can't really use too much flux. You can always clean it off with flux remover. I put it in an ultrasonic bath when I'm done. Uh, but there you go. So what'll happen is I, when you hit the flux with the soldering iron, it'll begin to melt. And then what I want to do is solder to that leg. You can see it soldered right there pretty pretty easily. Um, this will be easier if I put this so it can't move. Okay. All right, so once I got that leg, I can kind of tell it's on there uh, because I can move it and it doesn't go anywhere. So now I just want to put pressure on this and I'll bend this wire up and make sure I adhere it to the capacitor. And by putting it on the top, I'll pull on it, it doesn't come off lightly. Uh, by putting it on the top, you can see I don't have to worry about uh, getting it on that component, and you can see I clearly didn't touch this component. So you want to make sure you don't touch this one, you want to make sure you don't touch this one, you want just a good connection between these two, and that's it. It's, it's, it's really that simple. Um, you can see I did that really quickly, so doing the ones I did didn't take me that long. And I just snip off the extra with some flush cut dikes you can see here. And there's your mod. So, so basically what this does is give it just a very good ground trace between there and there. Um, you can see it's, it's adhered good on all the pins. Um, and it's really easy to do, but if you don't feel comfortable doing this, like I said, you can send it to me. Or maybe you know someone that can do it um, that has a little more practice. But you can see I did it with a, a fine tip, not a super fine tip on a soldering iron. Um, and some flux. I didn't really need anything else when I did it um, to, to repair this.